So now that I've rehabbed my basement again, everything just looks like it's uh, doing all right. Except for, uh, I got one spot on this log, as you can see, that I had to tape up some holes, it's getting bad. But that's probably because these were the first two logs that I made, and uh, they sat on the shelves while I had to uh, rent a drain snake from the hardware store and snakes this drain because it uh, backed up when I poured out the water. I pulled up a whole bunch of shredded up uh, plastic bags put in there by the, uh, the owners before me. You know how nice. <laughs> so uh, I'm happy. Looks like everything else is fruiting all right. You can see I'm having a little bit of this uh, the odd shape but sometimes that's just normal. It might be too that it's pretty dry outside and uh, where I'm keeping the mushrooms colonizing in the one side of the one corner of the basement I try to keep, uh, keep that as dry as possible so it might get started out like in that formation but as you can see I'm getting mushrooms underneath the plastic in all various parts and everything everything looks like it is uh, just doing all right now I decided to make a couple logs over here I just uh, started fruiting about two days ago. Uh, so I decided to make these without using any plaster and they seem to colonize fine and fruiting really about the same. I'll do a comparison obviously when I get results from each but for the for the meantime I'm only going to be making the logs without the plaster because it does it does get to be a kind of a mess your, your hands get caked up with it. I have to use a uh, scrub brush, like one of these right here, to uh, get the plaster off because it sets by the time I'm done uh, working with it, and, you know, get it off the table. So, uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. And, you know, if it adds just, you know, an extra pound or two to the log of uh, mushroom production, that's well worth it to use it and uh, worth the uh, work involved. So I'm going to give an update here in about, uh, about a week and a half. It's about a week and a half to two weeks is when these mushrooms will be uh, ready to harvest. And we'll see what things look like then. So it's been a few days later and you can see everything is doing fine. Even the uh, one one bad spot on this log really isn't spreading, and that's a good sign. You can see here too, where uh, there's some pinning around this hole by it. It's always a good sign when you see uh, mushrooms forming around a bad area. It tells you that it isn't the contamination isn't deep and it isn't spreading. But everything is doing fine. Even uh, these chunky parts over here, they're turning into uh, mushrooms around it. So that's good. And again, the uh, logs that I didn't even add any plaster to seem to be doing fine. Now you can see that there's still some, some parts with a little bit of uh, orange metabolite. And that's, that's a normal amount that you'll get. And even uh, if it's perfectly clean, even in the uh, the bags of spawn, you'll start uh, producing that metabolite in small quantities, and it'll never it'll never usually get any darker of a color than that light orange. If it turns like a uh, dark red, that's usually a sign of uh, stronger contamination. So, I'm going to give these about oh, let's say they got about another week to a week and a half before they get finished and uh, we'll start comparing results. So it's been another few days and everything is doing fine. I'm actually harvesting some mushrooms today. You can see I got some in my boxes. Now they're still turning out a little bit large and uh, they're not coming out a whole lot on the first flush. Now why that might be I think is because normally when it's cooler it takes about 14 days for the log to colonize and then about oh I'd say another four or five days 
to uh, see some mushrooms growing and some pins starting. But since I've been using the coffee grain and it's been warmer out, these are seemingly uh, colonizing completely in just nine days, which is great. And then they start pinning it about three, four days later. And you can see, I think what's happening is that it's kind of pinning too fast and uh, not locking up a lot of nutrition for fruiting on the first flush, which is not necessarily a bad thing um, because probably what's going to happen is on the next flush, we're going to see probably more mushrooms than this and probably still maybe have a decent third flush too. And I think these logs are going to do well enough that uh, they're not going to spoil and uh, go bad uh, by the third flush so I can keep them down here and get, really maximize uh, the yield potential. You can see here where that one bad spot was on the side of this log, it's actually uh, surrounded off the mold really well. And it's even pinning underneath this tape that I blocked the one hole off. So that's a really great sign that the mycelium is still healthy and strong. I did have a couple more bad spots like on uh, this one back here. And then there's a little moldy spot on this one. On the ends where uh, I must have got laxed and mixing it evenly and had a, a large span of cottonseed hulls with no grain by it and went bad with it. Bad before the uh, mycelium could surround it, but as you can see, it is uh, not really spreading too much. And if it just gets towards the hole, I just tape it off, but everything else is doing fine. Even these, uh, the logs that I didn't use plaster in, you see they're fruiting in about the same fashion. Also, too, you see a lot, of these a lot of the splitting going on. That's not because it's been dry down here. That's actually because the mushrooms are growing so fast that uh, it causes them to split. So, again, we'll compare some results after I get a few of these done. Probably ought to wait till I get like you know the second and third flushes to make a final conclusion and get a grand total. Well, I'm going to I'm going to uh, harvest the rest of these and uh, see how much I got. So the first flush I picked off these logs totaled about 10 pounds. I was hoping for about 15 to 16 pounds using one bag per log but I'll take what I can get for the moment. All the mushrooms, of course, were still large like these ones. And you can see that the logs I have back here are pinning all over a bit more normal. And maybe we'll even produce more too, a lot smaller mushrooms. So uh, I'm not quite sure why these were behaving like that, but my best guess still is that it's still a little too warm down here. I actually got lax a few days and uh, didn't have my air conditioner running here because it, it was getting cooler outside and I thought the air that came outside would be enough to cool the basement down enough. But yeah, it got above 70 for a few days and I actually had to uh, throw one of the logs out back here because it, it did indeed build up too much heat. And these logs I have now, you see the one that empty space that I threw out. These are still, uh, I can put my back of my hand to it, and yeah, they feel warm. But the logs that have already colonized, the temperature has dropped off. And it might just be too that the few days that was warmer down here, above 70 degrees, that uh, I just so happened to have these logs over here. And even these ones are, yeah, these ones are a bit warm too. But yeah, I just happened to have these ones over here at the, the point of mid-colonization when the temperature was high. And like I said before, it's like once it gets high, um, there's really no stopping it because the inside heats up, more microorganisms start growing, and the temperature kind of just runs away. And here's one that uh, I have two bags in, you can see. It's putting off a, a good amount of metabolite, no mold so far. And it does kind of look kind of bad with the amount of uh, metabolite in the holes. But I made another two bag one, you know, with no uh, plaster in it, like that one. And it had the same kind of bad look to it, but you can see it fully colonized and looks pretty good. No mold problems. 
So definitely not any mold I'm getting is either because I didn't mix things well enough or it's running away with heat. But uh, I'm probably going to go back to using just uh, one and a half of those 16 ounce cups or two of those 16 ounce cups of plaster. I think three cups of it or three 16 ounce cups were, uh, was just kind of overkill. It's kind of making a mess on the table and I had to scrub things off. And uh, yeah, it was just a mess. But I think uh, adding some plaster definitely does help in getting that extra moisture out and reducing uh, overall temperature buildup. But I hope that the two bag is going to perform and make about 20 pounds like my other logs. Of course, you know, I'll show the video and let you know. But so far, uh, I'm not really having any problems with the molds and the contamination. You can see over here the the one log that I showed you before that had the bad spot that I taped up, that the mold is really uh, almost non-existent anymore. It's been almost cordoned off completely. There's just a tiny spots of green, but you know, even over here, there's the other bad spot I showed you. You can see it's uh, cordoned off. So as long as the king oyster mycelium is pretty healthy and there's not a lot of ambient uh, spores that has to fight throughout the log, it can handle some spotty problems pretty well, which is great. So that shows that my air quality is still good. I just gotta, you know, uh, be a bit more disciplined and be careful of uh, letting the basement get too warm. Of course now though, it's getting near fall and uh, my intake is blowing nice cool air in right now about 65 out and drop into uh, upper 40s at night so really you know I'm not gonna have even a problem with uh, the outdoor temperature getting in here AC still running I'll run it to the point where uh, it doesn't really kick on too much it, or you know it's not really cost effective as long as it stays below 70 I, I think I'm gonna be okay but like I said I think probably the 70 degrees you know getting near that is uh, making these guys want to uh, make the bigger mushrooms and not so many pins. Also too, you can see I, uh, I hooked up another uh, fluorescent light bar back here because I wasn't 100% sure that they were getting enough light for uh, a good pin set. Usually what I've seen though is uh, the king oysters don't need a whole lot of light compared to blue oysters. And uh, I think this will improve the pinning. I don't know if it's going to be the solution of why I have the big ones, but we'll find out. These logs back here are pinning just uh, normal, it looks like, which is great. And so maybe they had a little bit of a cooler start. Time will tell. I'm just going to wait to give uh, totals up in an uh, upcoming uh, video. I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this series. but. What we can take away today is that high heat is a problem. Anything above 70 degrees Fahrenheit is not too good for king oysters, especially in logs. A lot of water is a problem. We want to reduce that as much as we can while still providing enough uh, water content for the mushrooms to grow well. And of course the ambi ambient air quality is the next concern where you want to have as few live bacterial spores floating around and fungal spores floating around you know caused by places in your basement like corners old drains underneath blocks or equipment you don't want to have uh, cottonseed halls or other medium uh, rotting away and just making a mess and causing a havoc so that wraps it up i'll see you again on mushroom adventures